Okay, so um, this is going to be an interface walkthrough of RISE. Uh, RISE is some software that I started working on in 2012. Um, and in 2013, uh, we decided to, to build it on uh, a protocol called BitMessage. So RISE is basically a secure messaging and collaboration suite. The tagline for RISE was getting things done securely. Um, so as you can see here in this, uh, what, I, what we used to call like the, the stream view, uh, which is basically just a, like a chat client here, um, you see that there are messages that come in and there are different message types. So you see there's different icons for different kinds of messages. So these are regular messages um, that are just intended to be something like an email or something like an instant message. And then over here we have these task messages. Um, and you know these these task messages have different due dates, uh, different attributes such as due dates, uh, status, uh, who is working on it, and and we also implemented a um, role assignment matrix or a responsibility assignment matrix. So here you can see that my developer was responsible for this task, and I was accountable for this task. Um, also, if you click on this top button over here, you see that there are different views. So we also have a task screen, which we'll get to later. Um, but I just want to walk through the interface here. Uh, over here we have smart filters. So if I want to just filter all these messages just to only see the ones that come from my developer, Anton. Whoops, well, it looks like that's not working right now, but whatever. Hang on. Okay. All right, so we're back. Um, all right, so smart filters don't work. Also, the search, normally the way that you create a smart filter is uh, you, you search uh, for stuff, like let's say Anton, but the search doesn't work currently. It used to work, but it doesn't work right now in this build. I guess there's a bug. And then archive um, is basically just messages that have been essentially deleted. But but we don't we for some odd reason we made a design choice that we were just not going to delete anything. We were just going to archive everything. Um, my profile here, this button is just um, how how I get to my ID, and it also has some optionality for you know, some network options, and also for backing up my user profile and for restoring my user profile. So for just making a file that I can I can uh, enter into another installation of RISE and then I get my, my RISE ID, my, my cryptographic signatures. So this is based on BitMessage, um, which we're not going to use in this new rebuild. We're going to be rebuilding this software. Um, and uh, we're going to be using something called IPFS instead of uh, BitMessage. We're going to build the whole thing in JavaScript, and we're going to deploy it via Proton Native and React Native uh, on all the different platforms. So uh, this use case, I mean, it, it may be similar with IPFS, but it, you know, basically the idea here is you can back up your user profile to a file and then you can restore it uh, using that file if you want. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's it. And then help, very simple, just download your logs. Those are the two options. And, um, and you know, send an email to support at sovereignprime.com. And that's it. And then there's this plus button over here. Um, that just allows you to create a new message, to create a new task, and to create a new um, a new contact or a new group of contacts. So we'll go into the task view. So the task view is basically just like a little mini project management suite that's really cool. 
Uh, so you have tasks here, and you also have a work breakdown structure. Uh, so it's not just a task manager, it's, it's a task manager with subtasking, right? So if you have a big project, you can break it down into smaller projects, and you can see here that you can have all kinds of different subtasks, uh, you know, several different levels. So it's, it's like a task tree uh, structure that allows a lot of flexibility in project management planning. Um, and you know you have this these filters up here like today next overdue no deadline and then complete um, so if I click on this one right I can um, I can see all different all the different attributes of this this message I can see who's responsible for it I can see who's accountable for it I can see when the 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 task is due. I can see all different kinds of stuff about this task. Um, and I can also uh, reply to it. I can duplicate it. I can archive it over here. Uh, I forget how to reply to this. It seems the reply button. Oh, comment, maybe. Add comment, yes. So I can add a comment to this task. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that I can do with this task. And here's the calendar view. So what's cool about this is, like, let's say I want to, uh, I don't know, add a due date to this task. I can move it to the calendar, just like this, and then there it is. And I believe I'm also able to move it around like that. So that's cool. Um, just, yeah, just a, a nice little task management suite. And we have smart filters again, which don't work. And we have the archive and my profile and help. So the same buttons over here um, on this calendar view. And then we have uh, the contacts uh, screen over here. So this contact screen allows you to track your contacts. So let's click on my contact. We can see me. Uh, we can see all the tasks that I'm currently uh, involved in and we can also see my message history. Uh, if I go to let's say all contacts and I click on some other contacts, we can see that this this was just some Ubuntu um, virtual machine that I, I never, um, just some random contact that I created just for testing purposes. But you can see here the same kind of history involving this task, uh, this, this person, this contact. You can add notes about a contact if you want to. So this is kind of like a little mini CRM. At least that's the idea, just a, a customer relationship management um, program, but it's more of a contact management program, honestly. Um, and if I click on my, my developer, you can see all of his, you know, not only can we see the tasks that we're working on, but we can see some messages that we were sending between each other and that the entire message history is all here. Um, yeah, and now if we click on, let's say, a new group of contacts, right? I can make a new group of contacts. We can see here it is, and I can drag it around, uh, and I can make it a subgroup, or I can put it up to the top here, or I can make it a subgroup of this, or I can make it, let's say, uh, you know, location, uh, location based like Shanghai or whatever, that's a top level group. I can create new locations. I can put it in all contacts and just make it a new kind of a lead group. I can, I can move it all around. I can do whatever I want with these. So it's, it's basically, it's designed to be, like I said, a little mini contact, contact management suite, con uh, you know, customer relationship management program. 
um, that's very, very flexible, not too complicated, easy to learn, easy to deploy in any kind of, uh, you know, company environment, especially, especially with a, a bottom-up deployment scenario where you're not necessarily going and having a meeting with the CIO and convincing the CIO that they want to deploy this program in their whole company, but you're just, you're allowing, you know, like someone at the, you know, at the bottom or, you know, mid middle management to deploy this, this solution with their own team and then maybe it spreads in, in a company that way. Um, and then what we don't have here is uh, another screen that we wanted to add which um, would allow uh, for tracking of, of you know financials so essentially with tasks eventually what we wanted to do is we wanted to have payment built into these tasks directly um, in uh, cryptocurrency form so we want to allow people to pay each other in in cryptocurrency that we're going to build into this software um, so this software is going to have its own cryptocurrency and um, we want people to be able to pay each other in this cryptocurrency and we want um, people to be able to you know have payment dates or payment terms or like when the status for example uh, let's uh, change the status let's say uh, the status is uh, verified right at that point it's safe to say that the the task should be the payment if there's a payment associated to this task that it should be paid for so we want to have a financial screen where people can can pay each other um, can you know track their financials you know have like a basic forecast of how much they they they're supposed to be making let's say this month or next month or whatever their quarterly forecasts um, in the financial screen and we all we also want people to be able to add their their assets uh, for example let's say their computer and then um, you know have some basic stuff like you know the depreciation cycle so let's say that you have a computer and that you normally keep a computer for three years uh, you can have the value of your computer and then you can take off uh, a certain amount of that value on a monthly basis until until it hits zero and then you, you sell it and another thing that we want um, you know for the, the very purpose that I just described is we want yet another screen over here which is going to be very similar to uh, either Craigslist or let's say like a, a Facebook marketplace where people can uh, basically just a classified um, posting area where people can can sell goods and services like they do on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. But I, I prefer Craigslist because it's more flexible. There's it's more of a bulletin board. It's more of like a, a people's square, like a town square. So we want to add that screen as well. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. That's the walkthrough. That's what we're trying to create. So just a little bit more background. This whole thing is based on distributed censorship resistant systems. So um, another thing that we wanted to add here in the updates screen, that's what we called it for now, but the, that name can, I'm not attached to that name. Um, we want to be able to, uh, to also um, add uh, social like a status update, like a like a post or a, a moments or you know whatever, like um, like you do on on Facebook or Twitter, you just you post something um, that you send to everyone that you know on this on this software. Um, but we want we want to also add a uh, another feature here um, so that when when you try to post something you get asked a question and the question is is this in the public interest yes or no and if you answer yes then it posts it and if you answer no then then the software will ask you yet another question which is okay so why do you wanna why do you wanna share this All right 
and you know hopefully that'll filter out a lot of garbage from this network but basically what we're trying to create here is a, a censorship resistant um, communication platform that also has a, a commercial deployment scheme in the form of a productivity suite that is good for small to medium sized businesses right so we have a way to market it legitimately um, and also just because it's uh, built on distributed infrastructure there's zero cost to this that's the, the, the one of the major advantages this does not require a cloud service provider nor does it require you to set up a server in your IT room and have a sysadmin that monitors the thing 24-7 because this is all peer-to-peer -peer software there's no central server there's no infrastructure required you just download this software to whatever device and um, and you can use it so so there's no accounts to set up it's totally free it's completely open source um, yeah, so that's that's kind of the background of what what we're working on, um, but one of the you know the the key points here is that this is this is a um, this is essentially a, a social media platform, a censorship resistant social media platform that looks like a little tiny mini enterprise resource planner. Um, in, in principle, that's the idea. So we plan to market it as an enterprise resource planner with zero infrastructure cost because it's built on distributed infrastructure. Um, but it's a little bit more than that. It's a little bit more than that. Um, you know, because I myself, I spent 12 years in China and, um, you know, looking at how to circumvent um, you know, the, the, the firewall and, and things like that is, is something that I, I take to heart. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the basic, that's the background of, of what we're trying to build here. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, um, I look forward to your feedback. Thank you.